There are so many SUP boards on the market now, but how do you decide which one is right for you? We have to choose between different shapes, sizes, constructions, and volume, but sometimes it can all feel too overwhelming and we may end up buying a board that doesn't suit our intended purpose. Well, in this SUP board video, we're here to help you find the right board and to make sure that you choose one that's gonna suit what you wanna do out on the water. Before even starting to look at boards, we need to ask ourselves and answer these three questions. Number one, what am I going to use the board for? Am I gonna take it in the way of surfing or flat water? Am I gonna use it for touring or even sup racing? The second question, what is my weight in kilograms? This is gonna determine the volume and dimensions of your board. And number three, what do I wanna get out of the board in terms of performance? Do I wanna improve? Do I wanna go fast, turn easily? Or is it something that you're not really too fussed about, you just wanna cruise on flat water? No matter what your answer is to these questions, there is a board out there for you. What makes it a little bit more confusing is that some boards do cross over into multiple disciplines, but that also may save you some money. Let's dive in to our first question. What am I going to use this board for? This defines what shape the board will be and what conditions you will be using it in. Looking here at the array of boards we have, you can see there's different shapes, sizes, widths, dimensions, and in particular, the different outline shapes or templates that they have. Each outline has an intended purpose. One of the shortest and smallest boards on the market is the Surf's Up. You can notice that most surf specific boards have a pulled in nose and tail outline or a narrower width at each end. This helps with maneuverability and turning when on a wave, but it does sacrifice the board's stability and glide. To understand glide and maneuverability, if you stand on a board in your sup stance or in surf stance, the more length of board you have in front and behind you, the better it will glide and move more easily through the water, but the less responsive it will be when maneuvering as there is more length to turn. Looking at an all round flat water shape, these boards are generally longer and have more glide, so you can have fun paddling on lakes and rivers and get around a little faster. You will notice the nose and tail having a fuller outline and this aids in stability and balance. The nose shape will usually be rounded to offer the most amount of stability, but it doesn't offer the fastest ride. They are very versatile boards as you can use these in both flat water and for catching some small waves. Touring boards like this one here behind me, generally a little bit longer than the all round flat water boards. And this is to help speed and glide on those longer touring or sup adventures. They tend to have a slightly narrower nose outline to decrease drag and come with bungee cords so you can carry your gear with you. Moving on to race ups, and although they do look very similar to touring boards, they're generally a lot narrower and a little bit longer as well with their length in about 12, six to 14 foot range. A race board is designed to go fast, but it doesn't offer much stability when compared to that touring or all round flat water board. The nose shapes are pointed to direct water flow and create a faster board through the water. These are the four typical types of SUPs and outline shapes that you'll find on the market today. Understanding what an outline shape does and what its intended use is for is getting you one step closer to choosing your perfect board. Now the outline shape is affected by length, width, and thickness. And this is what we call the dimensions of a SUP. The length of the SUP will influence the board's speed and glide along the surface of the water. Like we said before, Longer boards, such as the race board, are going to have more speed and glide through the water, whilst a shorter board, such as surf's ups, will be slower. Now the width of a board is one of the most important elements of design because it affects the board's speed, stability, and also the outline shape. So looking at width, the wider the board is, the more stable it will be because you have a larger platform to stand on. However, this larger platform means there's more surface area underneath the board and that does create drag when paddling through the water. Widths vary greatly and you can see with the outline of a race board, the rails are quite parallel and they are not as wide as other boards. Having less width on a board equals less drag, which is why racing SUPs are narrow. The width of a race SUP is generally between 20 inches and 28 inches. Moving up from that, we have the surf SUPs, which range from about 26 inches to 32 inches in width. Up from that, we have our flat water all round and our touring SUPs, and they're roughly between 28 and 36 inches wide. But what width is gonna be right for you? 
Wider boards are suited to beginner paddlers and first time suppers. Also, they are suited to the more heavy or taller riders looking for more stability. Smaller riders may also opt for a narrower width. But for intermediate and advanced riders, narrower widths will offer more performance and help you improve your paddling. The thickness of a board is also another dimension. And generally, most subs are between four and six inches thick, with thicker boards again suited to beginner or heavier riders. The length, width, and thickness of a board ultimately determines how much volume we have in the board. And that leads us on to our second question, what is your weight in kilograms? Your weight will correspond to what volume your board will be. Volume is given as a literage and is the calculation of how much space is inside the board given its dimensions and it directly relates to the amount of flotation it will have. More volume, more flotation. One liter of volume equals one kilogram. So it's easy to work out your preferred volume from using your body weight in kilograms. To make it simple, if you weigh 80 kilograms and you have an 80 liter board, the board is gonna sit neutrally buoyant in the water, which means it's not gonna sink or float. It's gonna sit just under the surface of the water. But this is very hard to stand on and balance and only suited to the pro sup surfers. So to work out your preferred volume, as a general rule and approximation, for beginner paddlers starting out in flat water, you wanna take your weight in kilograms and times it by about 2.5. So if you weigh 80 kilograms, then times that by 2.5 to get roughly 200 liters for your board. Race boards and touring boards generally have over 200 liters and even up to 300 liters of volume, which is a lot of float. But all of that volume is hidden in the thickness because on these boards, they need to go faster through the water, which means they're going to be a little bit narrower, therefore lacking stability for those beginner paddlers. For surf ups, we are aiming for performance on the waves and volume does depend on your skill level. That is mostly true for all boards, but for surf ups, beginners should stick to about your body weight times two. For the intermediate sup surfers, you should be looking at your body weight times 1.5 or 1.6. And for the pros or the advanced riders, you should really consider looking at your board to be body weight times 1.1 to 1.3. And that's gonna really equal the correct volume that you should have for your surf up. Volume is the magic number we ideally look for when choosing our stand-up paddleboard. Underestimating volume means that you're going to be lacking stability and balance, which means you won't have much fun out on the water. Remember to take into account your clothing and accessories, such as a thick wetsuit or even the fins and paddle. They are definitely going to weigh the board down a little bit more. So make sure you go for a few extra liters of volume if you are wearing a lot of kit. But if you find the right volume, you cannot go wrong when choosing your next board. But let's step into the next question, number three. What do I wanna get out of the board in terms of performance? Hopefully you now understand that width, length, and volume will affect the performance of your board. Playing around with these numbers will really help you in choosing the right board, but a few other factors can influence our choice as well. Constructions of boards can greatly affect our performance on the water. Firstly, inflatable subs, they're designed to save space at home, but also get you out there having fun. They offer some durability when compared to the ease of dinging or cracking a hardboard. But if you are after performance of any kind, be it speed or added improvement, then an inflatable has certain limitations when compared to the construction of hardboards. A solid or rigid shape will plane better on the water than an inflatable with some deflection or less stiffness. This means that an inflatable board bends to a degree when paddling and therefore slows us down. And this is fine for cruising in the flat water because all of the SUP water team do use inflatable boards either on their SUP adventures or even paddling around with the kids. There are different inflatable constructions too, with the pricier inflatable SUPs opting for more stiffer materials, better seams and added enhancements to make the board perform a little better. When looking at composite or hard boards, there are many different materials that boards can be made out of, so opting for the right construction will aid in your improvement. The entry-level hardboards for SUPs are made from a PVC or a plastic mold, and these boards can get you out on the water having fun, and they are quite durable. These boards are mass-produced. They're also known as pop-outs. They can be less quality. They're definitely a cheaper price point, 
and they can be quite heavier to carry and feel on the water. Epoxy construction is the most common you'll find on the market, giving you a durable and stiff board that will last you a long time. Epoxy would generally float a little more as well, so this will give you added buoyancy and ease of paddling. A lot of brands are starting to use epoxy sandwich construction with bamboo or wood veneer or other materials laid underneath the glass to change the flex and feel of a board. This can improve performance, especially in the waves or choppy water where the right amount of flex is beneficial to bring some spark to the board. Moving up to the premium construction, we can see that boards integrate carbon, Kevlar, and also a Negra into their designs. Carbon and these materials are super strong and very lightweight, so this adds to the performance. You usually see carbon in surf ups and race ups, and this is definitely top of the price ladder. Now another design element to consider is the rocker of your board. Paddling in different water states such as in the ocean with choppy water or in the calm flat water in a river or a lake is definitely going to affect what rocker your board is going to have. The rocker is defined by the banana shape of the board or the lift and curve you can see from nose to tail along the rail of the board. The upside to more rocker or lift in the nose is having more clearance for chops and waves to pass underneath your board rather than washing over the top of your sup and knocking you off balance. But the downside is that it does come with pushing a little bit of water because you do have that extended nose that sits high on the water, therefore you're pushing water along the surface. If you choose to paddle in calm water or in a river or lake, then a board with little or slight nose rocker will allow you to glide and move faster through the water. But if you're paddling in the ocean with wind, chops and swell, then you want a board with some nose rocker to navigate the peaks and troughs of the waves and to keep you stable. Tail rocker or lift in the tail is also important to the board and for sup surfing, you'll generally find this on all boards as the board needs to fit into the curve of the wave. A typical decision would be whether to choose between a touring board or an all round flat water board as a beginner paddler. I must say that definitely the all round flat water board is gonna be great for those beginner riders this touring board would be suited to a little bit more intermediate or at least you have some experience paddling. If you are gonna take your board into the waves, you definitely wanna go for the all round flat water board. They're gonna be able to catch some small waves as well. They have some design elements from the surf shape stuffed into that board as well. But the touring board, they can also cross over and there's some definite boards out there that cross over disciplines. And this is what we call a hybrid board. For example, this JP, can be used for touring, can be used for surfing, it can be used for downwinding as well. It has a little bit of rocker in the board, it has a uh, nose shape that's going to be beneficial for that flat water touring, but it's also got a bit of surf shape to it as well, so it is going to catch some waves. So as you progress a little bit more in your supping, you're definitely going to want to have a look at some more design elements such as the nose shapes, the displacement hulls or planing hulls, the bottom contours, the concaves, the Vs underneath the board, and also the deck shape and the rail shape. So there is a lot to think about when you are looking for your next board. Just remember that a SUPS dimensions influences the overall shape and outline, and also its intended use out on the water. Understanding all of these factors are going to point you in the right direction to choosing your next perfect SUP. I really hope that you did learn a lot in this video. Please feel free to comment below Leave us any questions that you may have and we'll get back to you as quick as we can. Thanks so much for tuning into this Supwater video. We hope to see you very soon on another one. Take care.